Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. You're in for a thrill ride of a lifetime because I'm going to be reviewing the smart intelligent with an ingenious premise highly successful action thriller that came out on June 10th, 1994 and that is Speed. Story about a young LAPD officer was playing a dangerous pop quiz game by a bomb extortionist that he was about to go after. He was just set up a transit bus where he has a speed above 50 because if it drops below it'll explode with a bunch of passengers on board including uh, a pretty girl who's very spunky to join in for the ride and he's doing this for the money well yeah for for this bomb extortionist here yeah and this was the perfect uh, summer action blockbuster film at the time uh, for its uh, 30 million budget it actually grossed to 350.4 million and this is the movie that pretty much started the whole um, Mad Bomber idea of the story because I know after this we had Blown Away and I know um, True Lies was joining in with it and of course we had The Specialist which came out in the fall but this was the start of the summer uh, even joining in with other blockbusters coming around you know with Beverly Hills Cop Free, uh, The Flintstones and Maverick, and then of course The Shadow, uh, Forrest Gump, and all the the rest of the other blockbusters are heading away from the summer. So. <laughs> this is the brand new 4K Ultra HD uh, Blu-ray combo pack that I just picked up uh, recently at Best Buy. Um, just came out from Disney and Fox, uh, part of the Ultimate Collector's Edition which has this generic cover art that's basically part of the uh, uh, the scene where you got Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock on the bus this is sort of like the almost a little bit of the climax of the film but not quite because they're about to have all the passengers uh, go directly into the LAX uh, bus so they'll be safe and that way both of them will escape and that way the bus will continue to go straight into <laughs> the cargo Ed jetliner and explodes. So, and you can even see the chopper. So. I know, typical of Disney, but it gets the job done. And yeah, you can look at the back too. Um, this release doesn't have a slip cover. That's okay. Um, I'm fine with it. And it does come with a digital code. Which I already used it. and yep you can see it right here uh, the blue cover art is the blu-ray and this one is the 4k ultra HD and by the way the 4k scan is spectacular looks even better than ever before um, compared to the theatrical release I mean it's closer to that actually and it's actually better than the 2006 Blu-ray release that I never picked up. And that's the one that only had just a few extras. But luckily, this new Blu-ray um, carries the same master as the 4K release. And it has all the features, uh, well, most of the features. Because um, they forgot to port a few more that's directly from the 5 Star Collection DVD release. So nothing particularly brand new as it seems. I mean, it would have been nice if they added some new special features, you know, looking back at it. But that's just the only way they went for. It. Yeah, and this would be perfect for me to watch this on my 4K TV, since I have a 4K Ultra HD player. <laughs> and I'm happy for that. Um, but I also own the the previous DVD release, as I mentioned. Um, this is of course the collector's edition that's basically just a reissue of the five star collection so you have you know a two disc set that has all the features you have the first movie has the commentary you have the first disc you know, with the movie and 
this too has tons of features to join and I love this cover art much better than the 4k release <laughs> Uh, which, technically speaking, it's it's a little generic, but it's it gets the job done. Because we know Keanu Reeves is, is the big star. And when you open it up, you get a screenshot of both Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. This is part of the end scene. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're actually falling in love, just as they escape from <laughs> the subway station. And it does come with a booklet to join with it. I, which I'm going to try to get it out, and I'm having trouble. <laughs> see, just the same cover art as before. Uh, in the back, you can see the, the scene selections. And as you open it up, uh, you get all the information with screenshots. Uh, they even put in a quote. You know, the pop quiz, hot shot, <laughs> some more information, some more screenshots, you know, and there you go. <laughs> um, here's this one with Keanu Reeves, if I can show you better, and this two with Sandra Bullock. So now I'm going to put it back to the way it was, and along with the, the screenshot too. Okay, so there you go. This is also THX uh, digitally remastered too, so it does contain a, a THX 1993 trailer, which is yeah the one that you saw in Jurassic Park, among other films. This is the only release that actually has this version. So another reason to keep this release, and also another reason to keep it is to actually have some more features that are not on the 4K, Ultra HD, and Blu-ray release. So, yeah. Anyway, the first time I saw Speed, we rented this at Blockbuster uh, with my father, along with my mother, my brother Jason, of course, <laughs> and of course my sister. Eileen. Uh, actually, I remember watching this uh, late at night. I really wanted to see this movie because I heard a lot of exciting um, critical buzz that they said about it and it almost made me want to see the film myself too. And I always loved Keanu Reeves ever since uh, Bill and Ted's uh, Excellent Adventure along with Bogus Journey. Uh, Sandra Bullock um, I started to love her in Demolition Man because I saw that uh, on HBO. That was the first time. Of course, I already know Sandra Bullock was in other films before that. Um, and Dennis Hopper, I always remember him from films like Blue Velvet, uh, Hoosiers, My Science Project, among others. And I know he's been in other films too in the past. Having them together on screen just is just a perfect delight. I mean it really shows the intensity, the fun, the excitement, the joy. I mean th this is exactly the perfect combo for a film like this. It also shows that Keanu Reeves can actually play an action star because this was after his performance in Point Break. That's the first movie that pretty much started the, the idea of him actually starring in an action movie. And before long, he went on to do uh, the Matrix films, playing Neo, and also went on to play John Wick. That's right. Um, he also had that movie Johnny Mnemonic, which is a very underrated film. Probably would have been the perfect start, too. And I know both uh, Reeves and Bullock had later appeared in a film together um, the following decade called The Lake House, which is a romantic drama. It was nice to see both of them together again for the first time in 12 years. Uh, 
and sadly probably the last, but if they ever team up to be in another film again, that would be really cool. Um, you know, now that I think about it, it would have been awesome if both uh, Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock were in a John Wick film. That could be interesting. And I know Dennis Hopper is no longer with us, but he would always be remembered as, you know, not only playing you know villains, but he also plays a lot of great characters, no matter what. You also got Joe Morton to be in the film, too. Uh, he was from Terminator 2 Judgment Day. So he plays the lieutenant of the SWAT team. And you also got Jeff Daniels, a yeah, great actor. He's been known for films like Something Wild, uh, The Purple Worlds of Cairo. He was also in Arachnophobia. And, yep, that same year, Dumb and Dumber with Jim Carrey. <laughs> And then he was in the comedy called Tr Trial and Error with uh, Michael Richards. Yeah, but he's done a lot of great work, too, in, in his career. And I know he went on to do this HBO series, The Newsroom, which uh, Aaron Silken wrote. So, he's still doing great. Um, but it's a great idea for a concept, though, because not to turn into another diehard clone, I mean this was supposed to be just an actual film that follows not only for the bus as the, the centerpiece, but the fact that it even follows an elevator shaft at the beginning and even towards the end the subway scene. So it's this is like something that you didn't expect it. I mean it was sort of like almost in in a way kinda like the movie Runaway Train which uh, was a take on Akira Kasawa's uh, bullet train. And I know um, they took a lot of time to come up with the script because uh, Graham Yost uh, wanted to make this um, idea work that hasn't been done before. But, of course, with the help of Josh Whedon trying to rewrote the script, because I, I know originally uh, Jeff Daniels was going to be the villain, sort of like a, a surprise villain, but that didn't work. That he'd be able to work partners with um, with Howard Payne, yeah. which, yeah, De Dennis Hopper. So that wasn't going to work. And then I think they also wanted to make Keanu Reeves a hot shot. You know, a maverick, sort of like Tom Cruise in, in Top Gun, but that didn't seem to work that way. You know, the funny thing was, I know Tom Cruise was going to be originally chose to play the part along with other actors, um, but they weren't available, so they couldn't uh, do so. And seeing that this was the first movie that Jean de Bont had directed, because he's a longtime cinematographer, he actually did work on Die Hard, among many movies in his career. Especially the fact that he actually got mauled by a lion in that one film called War. I mean, he survived for that. <laughs> but he got to do a lot of spectacular um, shots um, that brought in a lot of intensity to it. All, the, uh, this, all these particular one shot after another with a lot of great editing skills to join in. I mean, this is exactly the ultimate rush. <laughs> Well, anyway, let, let's begin with the movie so I can continue to talk more. It stars Keanu Reeves, Dennis Hopper, Sandra Bullock, Joe Morton, Jeff Daniels, uh, Richard Lineback, Bo Starr, Jordan Lung, Alan Ruck, yes, Alan Ruck, who's Cameron from the movie uh, Fairless Bueller's Day Off, uh, Glenn Plummer, who went on to do another film called uh, Strange Days, um, but he's done other stuff. Uh, Carlos uh, Carrasco, Beth Grant, uh, yeah, I know, I've seen her in other stuff that she's been in. She was in Darny Darko, uh, among others. Uh, Hawthorne James, uh, Richard Schiff, yeah, I've seen that actor a lot in other stuff. Uh, Thomas Roseas Jr., Sandy Martin, and uh, Patrick uh, Fischiller is written by Graham Yost uh, with some uncredited assistance by uh, Josh Whedon, so he helped uh, rewrote the script, but it did maintain the original script from his idea. 
and it's it's produced by Mark Gordon, who I know he went on to produce other shows and other stuff. He was actually the former president of the Producers Guild of America, and he also is the head of uh, Entertainment One. And it's directed by Jean de Bonce, who, of course, not only is a longtime cinematographer, but he also went on to direct Twister, yeah, the action disaster film, another blockbuster. And, of course, um, he did went on to direct the sequel that follows um, Speed 2 Cruise Control, yeah. But then he went on to do films like The Haunted and the sequel to uh, Laura Croft's Tomb Raider, yeah, The Cradle of Life. The movie began set in Los Angeles, California, for an office building down below into the elevator shaft lies an evil, psychotic, but a true genius bomb extortionist named Howard Payne, who's played by Dennis Hopper, who was a former bomb squad member of the Atlanta Police department has been reformed later on by Harry. <laughs> um, his plan was to actually set up C4 explosives into the elevator for a hostage situation of office workers to demand three million dollars in ransom. So when already had been reformed here we meet the LA police officers uh, joining in with the SWAT team a Maverick hotshot with what a great face and, and a lot of charisma named Jack Traven, who's played by Keanu Reeves, uh, joining in with his best friend and partner, who's very good at this too, named Harry Temple, played by Jeff Daniels. Um, that's actually uh, led by Lieutenant Mac McMahon, played by Joe Morton for the entire team, to be able to save all the hostages inside the elevator since it's been stuck and all the bombs have been going off directly so they had to use a crane to hook it up and be able to take them out of there um, before long though uh, Payne was already listening to the conversations of Harry and Jack you know through a pop quiz and yeah, where Harry just um, gives um, the question and Jack answers which is <laughs> shoot the hostage so after that they finally uh, went after Payne on another elevator which then Payne actually took out a shotgun and and shot the the, the ceiling of the elevator while you know, Harry and, and Jack were there um, Harry eventually fell all the way down and, and Payne just had him as hostage while he's already been hooked up with um, an explosive vest filled with dynamite that's rigged to a pressure release detonator, it's like a remote, so he'll be able to control it to to have himself explode you know, with the hostage. So at that point on, Jack decided to intentionally shoot uh, Harry in the leg, that's part of the <laughs> the quiz here so the bomber will escape and once he did he blows himself up through the parking structure while Jack eventually just got blown all the way through the back hoping they begin to find out that if, if he actually had died or not but in reality he just magically disappeared and survived the situation so he so now pain is at a local hideout where he hooks up all the TVs, monitors around, has all the gadgets he needs and just to be prepared so he's watching all these news reports and and all these sports and and surveillance uh, cameras, footages and all. I mean, while well, he'll make a phone call trying to warn them that they want to leave the the free million dollar uh, ransom in a bag uh, directly into the the street corner of the um, the trash can. Yeah, you know, that's where the subway is at. Yeah, the Metro uh, Red Line. But more of that would follow. Uh, meanwhile, Jack and Harry are about to celebrate their victory after they've been awarded a medal 
for their outstanding job together you know, saving all the hostages and stopping pain so now Harry is being promoted as detective so they just basically just have fun you know having a party you know drinking and dancing and all doing a job well done but the next morning while Jack was having breakfast um, joint with the bus driver appearing and just getting ready for his early shift he began to witness that a massive transit bus exploded yeah with the same bus driver inside and then Payne contacts Jack on a nearby payphone explaining for through a pop quiz that the same bomb is rigged on another bus 2525 which it will activate once it reaches 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers you know, per hour, um, which it will be armed if you go above 50. But it, if it starts to detonate when it drops below 50, it will explode. He also demands a ransom of 3.7 million now and threatens to detonate the bus if the passengers are offloaded. So now Jack is rushing by, you know, stealing this one car so he can go directly into the freeway, which has a major traffic going around. But then, um, once we head off to the transit bus, uh, that's where we meet bus driver Sam Silver, played by Harford James. And, of course, we meet uh, a pretty passenger named Annie Porter, played by Sandra Bullock. Very spunky and all. Uh, just to head off uh, to go to her job, um, uh, mostly because her driver's license has been revoked for speeding, hence that. <laughs> so she can't. Decide, so she decided not to uh, take a. Uh, she, so she decided not to go on her morning job uh, through her car. So that's the only way that he ha she has to take. Um, but once the bus uh, head off to the freeway. Jack was trying to get to the bus as soon as possible, trying to warn Sam that there's a bomb on the bus. Um, they couldn't let him inside, so his plan was to uh, borrow uh, another car, which is a Jaguar, uh, that's uh, ridden by a black guy named Maurice, played by Glenn Plummer. So that way he'll drive off and begin to uh, warn the driver the, the message while having Maurice write it down and also to take the, the cell phone to actually make contact with Harry and then later he'll probably end up contacting Payne yeah. so anyway he, he tends to do this stunt where he's about to well break down the car door telling him that if he's insured and then he decided to jump off into the shield door so he'll be able to get inside the bus this was a risky one and then once he got in he was to begin to warn a message through the entire passengers until he spotted a criminal who was about to pull out a gun one passenger was trying to you know go after and, and grab the gun where it accidentally shot Sam in the arm and Annie had to take over to drive the entire bus which Jack informs her not to slow down because it has to go above 50 so it's going to speed up a lot so so it won't explode and that's where Jack was forced to reveal the bomb to the passengers to sh for shock and horror he had to examine the bomb underneath the bus and calls Harry to identify the bomber and of course we already know <laughs> Payne set this up um, so after a harrowing adventure through the city traffic, yeah, they were going all the way straight, where because <laughs> already um, Maurice just uh, crashes car directly into the yellow buckets, you know, filled with water. Uh, it's supposed to be sand, of course, but since this is movie making here, I mean, it would be a lot dangerous if they put a lot of sand in there. Um, yeah, because then the car would be destroyed and all horribly, and the passenger would be and the uh, the driver would be killed too. But through long though, and they had to exit the 
the freeway and yes Annie had to ends up crashing on the side curve of all these cars and vehicles around I mean they even crashed down another car that looks exactly the same as the Jaguar so obviously it's the same one and, and then <laughs> yeah which is from a tow truck and then they had to drive all the way straight to Long Beach where they're trying to avoid pedestrians around including this one shocking scene where this uh, one uh, woman was about to head off um, with uh, a baby stroller. You're thinking that the child is inside, but in reality, it's a bunch of aluminum cans. So she she might as well have been going on her way to the recycling bin to get rid of all these cans. Yeah, so that was a very shocker. But thank goodness it wasn't a baby in there. And then um, then a bunch of kids. Uh, we're headed off because they're about to go to school, you know, crossing the street, so that you're almost afraid that you're going to run over them too. And then uh, the LAPD decided to uh, add a uncrossed freeway, so they had to block uh, the entrance to, uh, through the the police car, so that way it'll it'll take a slight turn to the uh, off-road freeway. And before long, I mean, they're hoping that. They find a plan to actually have Sam um, get taken by by the rest of the team, so they'll be able to rush him to the hospital. Um, which the, they had to offload the passengers off a flatbed trailer, and the, but the Jack had to warn about plans plots, and it's already being witnessed to the events on TV. You know, all news broadcasting. You know, all the Los Angeles stations like. KTTV, Fox 11, KCOP, Channel 13, and all the other stations too. So they have to broadcast this uh, live. And now, for this dangerous situation, um, one passenger uh, named Helen, played by Brett Grant, uh, wanted to uh, get off the same way Sam did, and wants all the passengers to get off, but but what led to this uh, dangerous plan was that Payne actually detonated uh, this one bomb and that's where it killed Helen uh, right in front of them which sucks I know it really did it, it was very tragic hor horrifying and all so now the rest of the passengers including Jack and, and Annie were already in their grievance of the loss of this one passenger that didn't deserve and I don't blame her for being scared but then they had to go to another freeway ramp which then they found out that that because there was a lot of construction going around that they had to have the bus jump up into a 50 foot gap and this was going to be a risky one and a dangerous one too because once they did it they had to hold on. They had the, the passengers go on the right side, so that way you know they'll be able to make it all the way through the 50-foot gap. And once they did, as it landed, it was like oh, a miracle! So they did it. <laughs> so now they had to get off of the LAX uh, freeway, so that way they can travel around, and then. That way, Jack can have a plan uh, to join with Mac to actually uh, use a to use a, t a toll sled. So that way, he'll be able to go under the bus while it's moving um, to actually try to see if he can get the um, the bomb out of there. You know, trying to detonate. Yeah, there was actually a risk loss inside and all this other stuff included. You know, all these wires. So he tries to find a way to to take the bomb out but then it was going out of control um, after it's hitting all these speed bumps I guess it's from the tires or so and then the cable suddenly uh, broken off uh, with the sled and and Jack eventually says to hold on onto under the bus which he accidentally uh, hit the gas the full tank yeah all that gas was was spraying around him, you know, that, you know, where he had the, uh, the screwdriver that sticks to it. And now they, they, they pull him up, um, 
through the um, the open uh, they pull him up um, through the floor access panel so he was okay um, but then Annie unfortunately was afraid and then she got mad at him and they found out that yes they're leaking gas and now before long and before long though uh, Harry just identified uh, Howard Payne and then they began to find out his location which was at his place somewhere in the same area where the LAX is at and that's where Harry and the rest of the SWAT team decided to go inside so they can you know take out the bombs or even go after him but we, we learned that he's not there and then Harry and the rest of the team have been killed once the house explodes and now Payne just um, informed Jack that Harry's been killed and that's where it caused him to go completely furious and throws a tantrum and, and reveals that we're gonna die yeah and I don't blame him for losing his cool but then he begins to find something that he didn't think he would find already was that there's a surveillance camera underneath the mirror of the bus that's pointing directly into the sweater of, uh, of a football team from Atlanta so I guess in this way he decided to uh, fool uh, Payne by actually having the uh, uh, Mac uh, form the the news cameraman to actually broadcast the surveillance camera footage uh, to record it and be able to uh, repeat it so that way they can fool them into thinking that they're still on the bus so at that rate um, they're about to have uh, the LAX bus to have all the passengers uh, escape from that bus while Jack and and Annie decided to escape directly through um, the floor access panel so the entire bus is empty and they went directly into the the Boeing 707 cargo plane <laughs> I mean don't worry there wasn't anybody in there but there was one uh, driver who was about to move around so he got out of there as soon as he can just when it exploded yes the entire plane and the bus exploded completely so they finally escaped and after that, uh, both Jack and Annie were about to be rushed into an ambulance. You know, they're they're getting medical attention, you know, with all these cuts and bruises. And then Jack and Mac decided to head off to Pershing Square to drop the ransom, realizing that already Payne's been fooled, that no one had died in an explosion. The LAPD are waiting for him. He got so furious that he poses himself as a police officer to kidnap Annie who just got out of the ambulance truck to recover and recovers the ransom Jack follows Payne into the Metro Red Line subway on his trail discovers that Annie's now being filtered with an explosive vest you know, with the pressure release detonator yeah the same one that he wore at the beginning yeah this is where he says pop quiz asshole there's a trigger aim up top of your head what did you what did you do what did you do <laughs> so now Payne hijacks the subway train handcuffs Annie into a pole and sets the train in motion while Jack pursues him and then later he killed uh, a train engineer um, who's, who's played by Richard Schiff in a very small role and dies too. <laughs> so Payne attempts to bribe with the ransom money, but a die pack uh, bursts uh, right open as he opens and and it tainted the entire money. And that's where he becomes completely psychotic, where he takes out the machine gun, starts to shoot the the train roof, which Jack is on top. And this is where it leads to a big fight. You know where Payne was on top of the roof, uh, about to grab the the detonator and start smacking Jack with it, and I know Jack was about to kick him too. 
into the next uh, shot right towards um, the final um, fight he actually uh, lifts up his head and decapitates him uh, directly through this red line um, yeah red line here so now he went down to the train um, he took the detonator um, detonate uh, the entire vest unfortunately he doesn't have a key to the handcuffs so he's trying to find a way to take it off by kicking the pole no use so he decided to speed up the entire subway to hoping that this would actually work because it does go above and then that way he'll prepare himself to actually have you know, any release so I guess all the trains have been broken off all crashed and it went and this one front uh, subway just went straight into uh, what's supposed to be a construction to the the red line directly into Hollywood and Highland just crashes into it and then the train tilts and it just directs directly went to the the streets where you see the the Grumman's Chinese feeder, you can see the, uh, the El Capitan feeder and then next thing you know the tour bus came right underneath their path and <laughs> and they're about to head off and take pictures while you know both uh, Jack and Annie are, had arrived safely and they're and they're falling in love <laughs> at the end <laughs> and there you go very sweet moment to a, to a roller coaster ride <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, this is just a thrill ride from beginning to end. And it'll never stop for its um, an hour and 55 duration running time. I mean, this is just incredible. Non-stop, filled with tons of courageous stunts. I mean, yes, even Reeves himself had did some of his own stunts, too. Um, joining in with the rest of the actors. Um, outstanding performances by the leads. I mean, Reeves, Bullock, Hopper, uh, Daniels, even Morton. I mean, everyone. I mean, they're all terrific. And it really shows, you know, that for this particular story, you can do anything. As long as you don't turn this into another Die Hard clone. <laughs> But that's okay, because I love Die Hard. And we want this movie to be just as fun as, as that. But, um, yeah, they, they did a lot of work. I mean, they, they, they went from September 1993 all the way through December uh, to film all these scenes. Plus, they also use a lot of uh, models to, to create uh, certain scenes, you know, miniatures, and... They did have a mix of a little bit of CGI, just less of it, just to, to make some of these uh, shots a little more realistic in a way. But the rest of them are all done practically, exactly how it should be. I mean, for that budget alone, I mean, it really worked. Um, anyway, but Reeves really uh, nailed his performance, I mean, with a lot of charisma and all. I mean, it even shows that he's not just a hot shot. I mean, he can be serious, too. I mean, you can definitely see all the tragic that, that you can definitely feel for this character. Especially since he's beginning to experience being inside this speeding bus. And having to find a way to detonate the bomb and identify it and all. I mean, he's definitely one courageous hero. And you definitely care for him. And that's what I love about it. Um, Sandra Bullock uh, definitely was terrific playing pretty much Jack's sidekick. But also um, a very pretty and love interest that settles in later on um, as Andy. And you can really do no wrong with this actress. I mean, she's very strong too. Uh, vulnerable and very fun but hey same goes with uh, Reeves I mean he was also vulnerable as well uh, but Hopper really knows his performance um, I mean he stole the show he really did I mean the think that 
you know, after playing a psychotic in Blue Velvet, I mean, even though, yes, he did play the villain King Koopa in Super Mario Bros., which was terrible, at least we finally get to see a role that really deserves a lot of credit. And I'm glad Hopper really um, had a lot of fun. He was not over hamming it. He really knows the skills. He loves to push buttons towards everyone to know exactly what to do and you know how he's he's trying to you know manipulate them and all. I mean, th this guy is you know one scary man. I, I mean, this guy is just scary, but it it just works. Uh, Jeff Daniels is great in the film too. I mean, I, I really love how, you know, he really tries to figure out all the skills that Payne has been doing over the years. I mean, he fig he's trying to identify to figure this out so he can finally get him. Which I know it's sad about what happened to him. Um, uh, and all the rest of the actors, like Joe Morton, I mean, also great. It's nice to know that, you know, you have a lieutenant who's... He's very sharp and he cares about his entire team. You know, he's not one of your typical, you know, lieutenants who are always acting like, you know, such a um, always grudgy, angry, and all. Now, this this lieutenant is actually very, you know, energetic. And that's what I love about that. Um, as opposed to the uh, passengers, I mean, yes, Alan Ruck, uh, I know originally uh, he was going to be basically an idiot, um, an asshole for a lawyer, but then they actually rewritten his character to be just an actual passenger with, with some smart quotes and stuff, too. And, um, but at, at times he does tend to look he started to act a little bit more like Cameron. You know, like I knew he was going to pull in into the Cameron character like he did in the first Buller's Day Off. So that's what I felt. Um, yeah. Um, it did want two Academy Awards for Best Sound Effects, Editing, and Best Sound. Yes, the sound is just breathtaking. I mean, this is the, the sound that really... Uh, mixes in so well because it had all the energy all the explosives and everything that's so loud that it does feel as realistic as possible and that's how they did it um, some wonderful cinematography done uh, well John Devon actually helped around too and you know, moving around with the cameras um, they joined in with Andrew and Zai uh, uh, to provide it with uh, editor John Wright to do some editing shots where they had to use uh, different camera angles and they had to use like 12 buses maybe even more to actually shoot some of the angle shots that they had to choose like for example they had to take one bus where they had to put in the the, the, the side of the windshield uh, with the dashboard where we see both uh, the actors on the main front along with the passengers on the background and then another one is where they had to do a lot of stunts like the bus jump yeah this was a possible stunt to do but it worked uh, which I know this one st stunt man decided to wear a harness so just to hang on to it so once uh, the bus starts to make the jump and the hits and they have to use uh, the effects to put it together to make it look like it jumped directly into the 50 feet gap of the freeway ramp. I mean, this is just perfect. And it used several other buses, you know, you know, just for some more interior shots and more exterior and other stuff. So, part of movie making right there. <laughs> I love that. So. Incredible soundtrack by Mark Messina especially that familiar theme which I know it's been used in in trailers and TV spots of other films but it really works and you know that pounding the pulse pounding the sound the adrenaline pumping it's like you hear the, the beat uh, 
Tu 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 That thing. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> I really love this movie. I really do, and I'm so happy to own, you know, free copies of the same movie. <laughs> Uh, but whatever you do, don't bother with uh, the critically panned, lackluster sequel, Speed 2 Cruise Control, because that one is garbage. Um, which I'm going to review later on, too, because I want to tear that film apart. Um, despite of the actors I do love, like uh, Jason Patrick, um, I know Sandra Bullock is in the film, and William Defoe. So it's not going to be easy to review that crap, but we'll see. But anyway, uh, and the ultimate rush of a roller coaster ride that is speed, and I give the film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.